Three one Mac, seven wonders. And one of those wonders has joined us in the studio today. I'm so excited. I'm so Frank, hold me back. Get me my life jacket. I can't cope. Mr. Derek Quinn. Hello, Derek Quinn. Oh, oh Josh, how <laughs> You're are all you? Right. I am absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for coming in. Oh, it's a pleasure, mate. Really is. When was the last time we saw you? It's about 12 months ago. 12 months ago? Yeah. And you didn't recognise me when I walked in? <laughs> no, I didn't. Well, I do now, because I've got you tattooed on my... <laughs> oh, well, oh. Well, the reason we got you in 12 months ago, we didn't think Frank McMahon had 12 months left, so... But luckily, he's still with us, and... I can't believe your concert is just a couple of weeks away. I know, it's frightening. Tell us. It's frightening? <laughs> it really is You frightening. can't be frightened, you're a superstar. No, 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 I've got, it's frightening because I've got to start rehearsing. <laughs> what? You should have rehearsed already. What oh, is no, 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 no. On stage? No, 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 at home. It's, uh, the problem is, it hurts my fingers when they play now because I don't play. So I have to ration my uh, practice to five minutes a day. No way. For a big concert, you're doing five minutes a day? Well, You're making yet. me nervous. Not yet. I don't start till the 11th. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, pass the bucket. <laughs> oh, God. What's happened to your fingers, then? Is that just playing guitar for decades? No, it's because I didn't play for 46 years. Why did you not play? I just got quite bored with everything. No, that's like Miles Davis putting down the saxophone. That's not right. Oh, I thought he was a pianist. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, hopefully... Well, this just goes to show then, hopefully, the more you play, they're going to start getting oily again, nice and moving. Well, they're not actually, it goes the opposite way. It's, it gets a bit arthritic and that. So oh, man, don't yeah, say that. Yeah. Do you know what Sir Patrick Stewart uses? Cannabis oil. Really? And I'm not sure if that's controversial, I don't mean to offend any, but it does work. So please, because I want you back on the road playing that guitar. How would you smoke cannabis oil? <laughs> you don't! You don't! What? <laughs> you, I think you have to grind it. We're not, we're, we're not having this lesson live on air. Come to me after the show. I, I have a laboratory in cubicle one in the toilet. <laughs> but we want to help you because we want you to get back on the road, get back on that saddle, Joey, and ride <laughs> off into the sunset. Tell us more about the show. What can we expect? Because I've seen the lineup and it looks incredible, but tell us about it. Well, basically, it's, it's, it's all about thanking the stars of the 50s, I would say. Um, we've always had this idea, well, I have, and Eric, in, in, Eric Haydock, that somebody helped us to start in the profession and the main person was Lonnie Donegan with all this skiffle and everything so in the late 50s or mid to late 50s I started playing guitar about a year later Eric Haydock started playing on bass you know because he was bass with all this and without people like him we would never have picked up a guitar or done anything that's amazing. And isn't then, it? of course, you've got your Elvis and your Eddie Cochran's and your yeah. Gene Vincent, etc. You know, Fast Domino, and all those people then inspired us to learn different types of music, not just the skiffle. It's like the Rolling Stones yeah. and Chuck Berry and Muddy Waters. They learned exactly. rock, but also blues and soul. That's right. Exactly the same. The animals were the same. They were into all the blues scene. So we thought, well, we did the Manchester beat for the last two years with Mike Sweeney. And Mike didn't, or couldn't, do this year. So we thought we'd put our own on. And uh, we've got people who we like and who will actually make the show really, really Put strong. on a show. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we've got, well, Wayne Fontana. Now, unfortunately, at the moment, Wayne is, is ill. And he suffers from depression and anxiety. But I've got his girlfriend, actually, he's bringing him over to my house next week and we're going to have a chat and... Have a, go on. Yeah. Get him. Get see him. if we can, uh, you know, get him round a bit. Yeah. And we've got uh, Peter Donegan, who is Lonnie Donegan's son. Fantastic. Who's going to do like a 20 minute Lonnie Donegan session, which will be absolutely amazing. I've seen him work and he's brilliant. We've got Vince Eager, Vince Eager, who was in the late 50s, Used to do all the tours with Billy Fury, Mighty Wild, Joe Brown, all that type of thing. We've got Terry Rice Milton, who was with Cupid's Inspiration. We've got Alan Warner, who was with The Foundations. We've got Beaky from Dave D, Dozy, Beaky, Mick and Titch. We've got uh, Pete McLean, who is local Stockport lad, who's going to do the comparing in the first half. And the second half, we're not having a compare at all. 
we're going to do 34 songs right off the cuff. What? No stopping, no changing, no, no nothing at all. It's just straight on with it. Derek, how long is this concert? Seven hours long? About three That's and a half minute. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds fantastic. Have we got you for the whole hour now? The whole hour? Yeah, go on. Oh, we got, because I haven't seen you for a year. You can't just waltz I'm in not, and I'm waltz not, out. Honestly, not. I've been so lonely without you. <laughs> <laughs> my, my 60s rock god. Thank you so much for joining us today, everybody. It's Derek Quinn who's coming today to promote Deconex Vintage Rock and Roll Party, and it doesn't get more vintage than this superstar sitting right next to me. Honestly, <laughs> I'm. That a compliment? It's, <laughs> no, it's not, but. No, it is. Of course, it's a compliment. Welcome to Tameside today. More of Derek on the way. <laughs> I love it. Gatlin Brothers, Roy Orbison, a doobie doobie, and Barry Gibb in one song released in 1985. It's called yeah, Indian yeah, Summer. Yeah. And you can hear him in the background there. <laughs> it's so raw, mainly because I ripped it from YouTube, which is absolutely fine. But such a wonderful song. Welcome back to James Side today. It's almost exactly 20 minutes past one in the PM, although I'll be honest with you. That is due to change. We're joined by a supernova today. I'm gonna keep getting bigger. <laughs> you should hear what I have to say in ten minutes time. We're joined by Derek Quinn from the original lineup of Freddie and the Dreamers. He's coming today to promote a huge extravaganza of a 50s and 60s event. It's called Deconex Vintage Rock and Roll Party. Eck is of course Eric Haydock from the Hollies, which just sounds incredible. Oh, it's great. That's great. And we've also got, by the way, I forgot to mention, we've got a living legend from the 60s, well the 50s actually, and um, He's still rocking at 86. It's Wee wow. Willie Harris. It's unbelievable. 86, 86 years 86. old. And he's yeah. never stopped. He's never stopped. He's lost his loincloth. He used to wear a <laughs> loincloth. I've got it, that's why. Yeah. And, a, and a paper mashy club, but that's wrecked now. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like putting together all these stars for the event? Did it take much enticing or coaxing? Or did they offer to do it? No, no was coaxing it whatsoever. I just rang them up and just said, you're doing it and this is fine. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> no, they're, they're, they're great, honestly. The wonderful thing about working with people that have been doing it for all that time, they're professionals. Mm -hmm. And when you say, well, you're only going to do two songs, they don't say, oh, I want to do a whole show. <laughs> they're, you know, they're not lovies. They're, they just kind of say, fine, what am I doing? And I've actually told them what they've got to do, and they... They're absolutely fine about it. So you came up with a structure and you're going here for that long and you're yeah. doing this? Yeah. How long does that take? Well, it just, as you're talking, it, it kind it of just evolves. Kind of, the cogs start moving. Yeah. I'm afraid, Derek, because it sounds like this might be your last hurrah. And it I don't want to- probably is. Don't, don't! You meant to say- <laughs> <laughs> You meant to say no, Josh, this is just the beginning. No, well, no, well, I've just started a, a, a new rock and roll society, uh, which we had the first night on Wednesday this week mm -hmm. in Stockport. And we, in five weeks, we've got 348 members on Facebook. Wow. Um, but, but the idea is that you, you become a member on Facebook as a Facebook member, then you commit to go into what we call our shindigs. And once you do that, then you get a membership card. Right, so you have to go to... Right. Yeah, you've got to become a, a fully-fledged membership card member. And uh, we've got 149. Wow. And the venue we use only holds 120, so it's a bit of a problem at the moment. But, I mean, a good problem to have. Start small, and it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. But what I love is you've got this new project now. Yep. So, because you're going to live to 100, so you need to... Oh, is that, oh, look at <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love your ambition. <laughs> now, Derek, stay around for a while. Will do. Because last time you came on, I think it was about a year ago. God, it goes so fast. You told us such wonderful anecdotes. One included John Wayne. And oh, what yeah. I want and the listeners want is another great anecdote. So you just rack your brain oh, and try and think. You. Have you got one already? Oh, my God. I love him. And we are going to play, of course, Freddie and the Dream is a classic hit on the way. I think it was number one. You were made for me. We have Paul Weller on the way as well. Thank you for joining us, everybody. It's 23 minutes past one number in the PM. Number uh, three. Was it number three? Yeah, we never had a number one over here, only in America. Okay. Oh, well, he's bragging now. It's like having... <laughs> <laughs> it's like having Dustin Hoffman in. Number three, number three, number three. <laughs> Weller, Broken Stones. From a man's brightest own version of that song, it's called Broken Bones. 
Good afternoon, welcome back to the show. It's almost exactly, I get excited when this happens, 30 minutes held on to one. It's exactly 30 minutes past one in the PM, although, sadly, that is due to change. Very special guest alert today. Hello, Derek Quinn. Hello, John. Hello, my little dear. Hello. From the original lineup of Freddy and the Dreamers. Original. Do you remember what every single charted and every album charted? Have you got that in your mind? Uh, no. Just so, <laughs> I was gonna say, just so you can brag. No, no, no. I, I, well, I know we never had a number one over here, so it was always either two or three. Oh, that's not bad. Or what? nine, or sixteen, or twenty-four. <laughs> I, I, here we go. As the years went on. I, I'm going to drop some toothpicks and see if you can count them quickly. <laughs> so you had more success in America than the UK? No, I wouldn't was say it? that. We only had, like, really one hit in America. We, well, we had two, really. We had the one, which was, I'm telling you now, uh, which got to number one in April 65. And then the week after, Wayne Fontana and the Mindbenders became number one from Manchester. And then the week after that, Herman's Hermits became number one, all from Manchester. So they had, for three weeks, you had three number ones from three Manchester bands who were all with the same agency in Manchester. Wow, that just doesn't happen. Never in a million years. Why was that? Was it just the way you was marketed from, oh, look, the new band from Manchester, or was you doing similar type of music? I think... The biggest contributor was uh, the Ed Sullivan show. <gasps> was you on the Ed Sullivan show? Yeah. We really did. big show. Really couple big. Couple of times. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Stop name dropping now. I've got a bad back. <laughs> well, you you know this. I'm you sorry. Asked. I did ask. Tell us about the Ed Sullivan show. Well, he's got as much personality as that door, really. <laughs> um, he, he was absolutely like a wooden plank. He just talked. It was frightening, really. Hello. This Hello. Is, Ed Sullivan, and here's <laughs> Freddie and the Dream. <laughs> and everybody's falling asleep while he's talking. It's terrible. Wow. But the show was phenomenal. I mean, it was syndicated up, uh, uh, right across America. It was the biggest show, probably. Biggest show. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, of yeah. course. Do you not have any imagery from then? Any videos or Polaroids or anything? Yeah, it's on YouTube. Is it really? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. You're uh, sorry. You're making me blush. I'm not. I'm not going to ask you to come out for dinner with me. I'm just. I'm just oh. gobsmacked because <laughs> I'm into late night talk show hosts, especially Johnny Carson, David Letterman, and Ed Sullivan. These icons who started at the genesis oh, of yeah. TV. Yeah, yeah. And just like I get to meet you and you have a connection to that era, just outstands me. You're my Neil Armstrong. I don't need to go to the moon. I don't want to. <laughs> I need to go to your gig. It's better. Uh, I can tell you a lovely story about, well, I won't tell you who yet, but we were doing a, um, a little snippet in a, in a film in America, and we were in Los, Los Angeles in the film studio, and we had a break, and over there then, of course, they had all the machines for your coffees and your coats. Oh, no, they, we were unheard of over here, really. I mean, they had everything in. And I went in this room, which was, just had tables and chairs and these massive machines. So I went over with my little 25 cents, put my 25 cents in and pressed what I thought was coffee. <laughs> and as I pressed, I realised, oh no, and coke. <laughs> oh Jesus. So I kicked the machine and as I kicked it, this boy said, can I help you? And I, oh my <laughs> God. No. Heard, you know when you felt in court, like a naughty boy? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> And I thought, oh, oh, what can I say? And I, I didn't turn around. I just said, oh, I'm sorry. Um, I wanted a coffee and I got Coke. And he said, gee, no problem. I'll help you. I'll have your Coke. I'll get you your coffee. So this hand came across and it was like a white thing. And I put the money in and he said, excuse me. <laughs> and I moved over. He went, picked up the coffee turned to hand it to me and I turned then to look at him and nearly dropped the coat it was Ernest Borgnine no <laughs> in his McHale's Navy outfit stop it, it was what unbelievable was there, he shooting a film they were shooting was McHale's Navy they see oh my TV God. series so, what yeah well, and, well, did you not freeze well, for I a love it. I, well I nearly dropped the coat <laughs> <laughs> don't drop the coat after that ordeal <laughs> Oh, oh my what God! What a lovely guy we start talking. For was he really nice? Yeah, really nice. Was this really post Oscar or pre Oscar? Because he won an Oscar. It was pre Oscar. Right. Okay. Yeah. He was still a huge star. Fabulous. Oh my God! 
really, I, I really love this. nice, man. Have you got any more anecdotes in your head? We'll save them for a little bit later, but please mm -hmm. just, it's so entertaining, because as you're telling him, and it might be the way my mind works or everybody's mind works, but I step into the 1950s or 60s and I'm there and I felt like I was putting the coin oh, well, into the machine. I've got a great machine. one for you then, I've got a shoe one. <laughs> <You've> got <laughs> He's going to tell us all about it after Freddy and the Dreamers, number three in the UK charts. You were made for me. You were made for Tantalee. Freddy and the Dreamers. You were made for me, number three in the UK charts. We're joined by one of the Dreamers today. Well, the one I've been dreaming about anyway. It's Derek Quinn. Welcome to the show, Derek. Oh, hello, Josh. I hope that wasn't your worst nightmare. <laughs> no, no, you should see what you did to my sheets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so looking forward to this show. It's on October the 12th. Yep. Yes. 12th of October. I cannot wait for it. And how do we buy tickets? Can we go online? Online is the best way, either to the plaza or is it Key Tickets, I think? Uh, the, 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 just those two that sell the tickets. Plaza, right. box office and key tickets what happened to the rest of the dreamers do you still speak to the dreamers i speak to roy who lives in tenerife and he's been there about 28 nearly 30 years now and pete um i've not spoken to pete for a few years uh he was supposed to do uh the first manchester beat but he, he cried off so uh, i've not really spoken to pete but roy i've seen a lot yeah because i would assume being in a big band in the 60s you're, you're, you're like brothers and you always stay in touch, but was there any animosity there at any point? <clears throat> no, it's, look, you try living with somebody for, like, on tour for five weeks, six weeks, you, you don't always get on, it's impossibility. Not everybody has the same mindset, <clears throat> but there's no kind of, I don't like you, I don't like that, it's just people have different reactions and different, different ways of want to do things. Yeah. But, uh, oh no, no, there's no, uh, you know, if we ever had an argument, it was over and done with, and that was the end of it. You know? so, we, so we can't look forward to a reformation of the band? No. Oh, why? <laughs> why? What, you know, I've got a piggy bank at home, I thought this is going to work, this, this is their salary, they're going to get back together. Oh, right. The stage is in my back garden. That's my, <laughs> you, you are my birthday present. What's happening here? Now, <sighs> rack your brain for some more anecdotes, we are going to play on the way. Sweet ballroom blitz. We've got another Freddy and the Dreamers on the way. It's called I'm Telling You Now, which was number one in the US of A. Oh and then hopefully I'm going to be cheeky, but I am going to ask you for another wonderful story anecdote, if you will. Is that yeah, okay? Okay. More at Derek Quinn on the way. Don't go in anywhere, everybody. Welcome to Tame Side Today. Sweet ballroom blitz. Welcome to the show. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining me and Supernova. Derek Quinn, who's joined us today, is coming to promote Deccanex Vintage Rock and Roll Party. It's going to be an evening of nostalgia like no other, and featuring stars from the 50s and 60s. Now, I wasn't around in that time. I'm 26 years old, you but... Sure? No, I, I feel like I've got an old soul, honestly. I went to my GP and said, Josh, you have an old soul. But I love the music. The era of music, it was real music. It was real singing, it was real playing, and it came yeah. directly from the heart because you were influenced by the earlier artists, like I mentioned before, Chuck Berry and Muddy yeah. Waters, the souls and the blues and the rock and roll. So we have a, a megastar in the studio. Now tell me more about the night. Is it just music or do you tell anecdotes as well? No, it's, it's purely music. Well, I, I suppose Vince Eager or Peter Donegan might do a little bit bit of a, you know, talk about things, but not a lot, to be honest, because it's really about the music. Yeah, well, so it should be, but you're very funny. You're very funny. You could have that crowd in stitches, well, honestly. We're not there for the fun. Well, yeah, we are there for fun, that's wrong. Yeah, just show your personality. People love you. We've got on the bill Wayne Fontana, Vince Eager, Terry Rice Milton, Adam Whitney, Those Adam are all Warner. the originals, by the way. The original, original ones. Singer the original from ones. Cuba's inspiration, the original guitarist and singer with the foundations. Uh, Beaky from the original day, D. Doki Be Beaky. Dozy? Dozy. <laughs> Beaky making tits. Yeah, all originals. They must get a kick out of this. They must be so looking forward to it. Yeah, they are actually, uh, and Gidea Park, uh, the, 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 the band, are, are backing everybody on the show. They've got to learn something like 60 songs, which is unbelievable. Wow. It's such a big gig. It's a bit, booking out the plaza, that's very ambitious. You've got guts, Derek. Well, You've got yeah, guts. Well, we need the sales because uh, <laughs> we're, we're not making any money at the moment. 
<clears throat> but we're, it's all right. It's all right. It'll be all right on the night. As it will say. be. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. Now we are going to play another Freddie and the Dreamers track, number one in America. Derek won't let us forget it. It's called <laughs> "I'm Telling You Now." Then after that, hopefully, fingers crossed, another wonderful anecdote. And the Dreamers. Would you mind Derek Quinn, one of the Dreamers? I'm telling you now, number one in the US of A, number two in UK, which isn't half bad. Oh, I love this. I loved having you on. Honestly, I really do. I love a good chat with an icon. Oh, you're an icon, honestly. Well, I'm saying nothing. <laughs> Can I see you? Are you in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame or anything like no, that? No, no, we're not, actually. How did no, we get we, you we, in? We were a mums and dads group. We weren't, um, you know, the teenage, teeny boppers. They thought they liked us at first, the teeny boppers, but they gave up screaming. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you're incredible. We left it to the mums and dads. But these memories as well, I mean, have you thought about releasing a memoir or a tell-all book or something? Well, funnily enough, there's a gentleman that does one of your evening shows, Mr. Francis McMahon, who's, who asks everybody if they've ever written a book. And if I could write, I would do, but... Oh, no! <laughs> no. I'll type for you. Oh! Yes. Can you repeat that name again? Mr. Francis McMahon. <laughs> Francis McMahon. Seven o'clock on the Wednesday oh. evening. Oh, I've heard. Yeah, no, I've heard, I've heard who, it's quite good. Who does, does the most <laughs> fantastic job of helping us to promote our show. Uh, Marvellous. I can't thank him enough, really. He is wonderful. Now, tell us an anecdote that if you did have a memoir, you would put it in the book, definitely. Well, I have to tell you one, which was about the Philippines. We actually went to open a theatre in, which was their second city, I think, called Quezon City. And it was the producer of the show we were on, actually was the producer of South Pacific, the stage show. And uh, we had on the show was Nino Tempo and April Stevens, who were quite a good American act in those days. And we went, and we were actually staying about a quarter of a mile from this theatre, which, by the way, had 800 people working on it, and they were all paid one American dollar a day. That's all they earned, at one American dollar a day. And in the foyer and the staircase that went up, it was all gold. What? And they were putting gold leaf on, and they had security guards when they came out checking them for any gold leaf they might be taking home with them. <laughs> oh, oh, it was frightening, honestly. But the worst part, we were in this, shall we say, it was like an auditorium, but it was like a hotel. The, the downstairs was a circus, which, was, which they used to put shows on all the time. But the upstairs was like a hotel. And that's where we were staying. And it was all surrounded with barbed wire and gates and everything. And security guards. And we said, well, why Why do you need security guards? And they said, well, if you look across the road, about 100 yards down there, there's a, a bench. And on that bench, if you have a really good look, you'll see a fellow with a rifle. <laughs> and he says, what are you doing there? Was apparently, apparently, he's one of the people that works in the circus, killed one oh. of his relations so he he had actually gone and killed this fella's all his family oh and was waiting for him to come out of the circus Derek what and so consequently we said we wanted to go out for a night out and one of the security guards says where do you want to go and we said Manila they said we want to go to see Manila and they said okay uh, take this with you and proceeded to bring out a gun which he gave to Bernie, our drummer, who was really the worst one he could have given it to. Oh, my God! <laughs> my God! I've got a gun! I've got a gun! You know, just waiting for him to pull the trigger. And then Nino Tempo came with us, and we went into this nightclub, and um, our manager, Jimmy, who was a nutter, to say the least... And we have to rush you, Derek, I'm sorry. Right, very quickly. <laughs> he, he, all, he was, all these girls around the bar, and he said, oh, come and join us, come and join us. Uh, so all these girls came, and when we were going... They came up with a bill, which was like an astronomical amount of money. And we said, what's this for? Well, the girls were all on champagne, which we knew were, it wasn't champagne. Next thing was, they're gonna, the bodyguards, not the bodyguards, the bouncers were coming in, you know. And then Bernie said, we're not going, we're not paying for that, and got his gun out. And little Nino Tempo pulled out a silver-handled two-shot gun. 
what's happening? Oh and it was, uh, anyway, we got out without paying. <laughs> not, we paid some of it, but not what they wanted. Oh, it's frightening. <laughs> place. Ladies Absolutely. and gentlemen, Mr. Derek Quinn, who needs to write a memoir, a tell-all book, I might even do the biography for you. <laughs> Go and catch, please, 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 Deconex Vintage Rock and Roll Party. It's on the 12th of October. 2018, of course, it kickoffs at 7:30 p.m. and it's music, 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 music. A wonderful evening of nostalgia. Go on the official Plaza website and buy your tickets now. Once again, Derek Quinn, everybody. Thanks, Josh. Thanks Thank very you much for having us in, mate. So, God so bless. much. Hi, we're Tommy Kitten. The best music mix. Hi, we're Girls Aloud. All day, every day.